Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and time for another Tasting Tuesday. Today we're going to the Lone Star State of Texas in honor of tomorrow's Whiskey Lore The Interviews interview with Nico Martini, who is the writer of the Texas Whiskey Book. And in that, we're going to be talking about Texas Pride, the Texas Whiskey Trail, what makes a Texas whiskey, and a little bit of history, although there's not a ton of history in Texas and its whiskey industry. It's very recent. We'll find out who the first Texas whiskey distillery was, and there is some controversy around that. We'll talk a little bit about some things about Fort Worth that I had no idea about. Something about the mob. It's going to be really interesting to check that out. And we're also going to talk about Doc Holliday. And one of the things I wanted to bring up about Doc Holliday in that interview, and I, I just couldn't quite squeeze it in, is that most people probably know that Doc Holliday, Old West hero, Tombstone, Shootout at the OK Corral, was a dentist. He actually came from the South and moved to Dallas and lived in Dallas for a while. And he set up a dental practice there. But unfortunately, it didn't last very long. And the reason it didn't last very long is that the other thing we know about Doc Holliday is that he had tuberculosis, which caused him to cough quite a bit. And apparently his patients weren't too enthused about having him cough all over them while their mouth is wide open and then he's probably ripping out a molar or something. So bad enough having to go to the dentist, having him cough all over you isn't, isn't a big plus either. We've got some other Doc Holiday lore that we'll throw in in the episode, but anyway, I thought I'd throw that in because I, I, I love that story. Anyway, we also have, we're going to talk about all sorts of different whiskeys from Texas, and there are a lot of them. There are more on the way. We'll talk about some of his favorite distilleries that he visited. And uh, one of the distilleries that I've visited is Balcones, which is in Waco. Got a chance to do the tour and meet Jared and, and go through and talk all about what they're doing there. And I actually left with these two bottles of whiskey and Shame on me, it's been since March of 2020 since I've opened these and started tasting them and I'm now getting around to doing a review. So they've had a little time to age in the bottle and uh, I've talked about them in the past but I haven't done a full review on them. So I figured I would jump in and talk about each one. So we're gonna look at these two. One is Mirador, which is an annual release and the other is their flagship, which is the Texas Single Malt One, and the one thing about Balcones, their main focus is on single malt, but they also do a bourbon, they do a rye, they've got a variety of different whiskeys that they, and techniques that they're using, and they're doing some very interesting finishing experiments. But the single malt category is the one where they have the most prominence in what they're really known for, and one of the cool things about that distillery is that a lot of American single malt distilleries are going to Vendome and getting their stills from Vendome. Balcones actually went to Scotland before the big rush for distillery uh, pot stills, uh, for Scottish pot stills at Forsyth that put them on a huge backlog. They ended up getting some Forsyth pot stills, which are beautiful to look at. Very interesting too, they have a condenser coil over the top rather than to the side or elsewhere, which is very unique to them. So let's jump right in. We're gonna do a little tasting on these two and we're gonna start with the Mirador. Mirador is actually a little higher proof Ooh. and um, brilliant nose on this one. I, I start with this one because it has a lighter nose to it than the uh, number one single, single malt. And um, man, and this this comes at you, this is a, one of the things you're gonna notice is that it's a little lighter. This is actually older than that. This is a three-year whiskey, that is a two-year whiskey. And at 
three years, the reason it's lighter is because they actually use second fill barrels. So no new charred oak here, whereas you do have that over here. And it just helps it age a little bit slower. When I'm nosing this, I am getting this, there's, there's a nice little bit of fruit in there. I think the most dominant thing to me is almost like a cinnamon vanilla frosting that just hit me this, this time when I put my nose to it. After tasting this, this tends to show a lot more kind of leathery notes and the grain stands out. Um, there's a little lemon in this as well, which is really nice on the nose, kind of light. Um, the fruit is, is not the main thing that is the star of the show on this. Boy, well, it is standing out now. All of a sudden, the leather uh, kind of went to the background, and the, the lemon has jumped right out front. Mm, all right. It's got a nice mouthfeel to it. It's not a heavy mouthfeel, but it's adequate. The grain and char really come through on the finish along with some leather, tobacco. Um, this is 56.2%. So it's a hot whiskey in a way, but it's not. I, it Honestly, I could drink it this way and it's fine. You feel some warmth as it's hitting this area of your throat, but it's not overly aggressive. And actually it's got a nice clean lemony kind of a finish on it that is very, very pleasant. So this will be interesting because when I did the initial tastings on these, I went this direction. And so we'll see if the Balcones number one single malt changes when I nose it this way. Wow, a toasty. Much more toasty, much more of a sawdust kind of, a, of an oak coming through some kind of baking spice it it has a the, that sawdust kind of stands out in front and I, I got a cherry note out of this as well hmm a little more milky experience on that Wow, very different. Almost got like a cola kind of thing going on there. Um, part of that cherry and vanilla kind of mixing in together. On the finish, you get much more of that tobacco comes back. Some oak in there. Kind of like a buttery toast that comes in. Now, if you go on the Balcones website, you'll read all sorts of fruit notes. I don't really have the fruit notes standing out in front on this and maybe it's just something I have to take a little bit more time with but I get more of those kind of um, tobacco-y kind of uh, things and that sawdust right on top that, that really stands out. So Balcony is very interesting distillery. They do a lot of ex experimental stuff as well and they have a lot of different whiskeys, some annual releases, some special releases. So definitely one to check out and definitely check out this book as well. And I hope you guys listen to the interview, which will be up on YouTube as well as at Whiskey Lore. Look at that. Uh, as, as well as at Whiskey Lore, the interviews on your favorite podcast app. Open straight to Balcones. And I didn't even mark the thing. How the heck did that happen? I was going to see. This is really cool because he gives some background on the distillery. And it's a beautiful book. Great pictures. Uh, but there is a shot of those Forsyth pot stills, which I try to get a photo of them. It's very hard to do. You stand above them, you can kind of get a shot. But this is, is actually located in an old warehouse, a... Um, fireproof storage as you can see right there and so it's a really cool building but it's kind of squeezed in there 
And part of the reason why these whiskeys are aged such a short time is because of the Texas heat. That's something else we're going to talk about in the interview with Nico Martini. So I hope you check that out. And I hope you enjoyed the tasting and give Balcones a glance next time you head into your favorite whiskey store. I am Drew Hanish. Thanks again. And until next time, cheers. Slajava.